Okay, hey guys, or, or girls who study uh, fluid mechanics, I'm not sure whether girls study it, but if you do, uh, thanks for viewing my, my channel. Okay, now, we left off previously where we say that a pressure at a point of a certain liquid is the same regardless of what direction we're traveling, okay? Regardless of what the direction the pressure is acting upon. So whether it's the force acting in this direction, this direction, this direction, the pressure is all the same, which we label it as P over here, P like so, okay? You probably find this out in secondary school or high school physics, but at least we show using a rigorous uh, medical met uh, mathematical method, okay, to show that. However, that belies another problem. The problem is, is that we are in the liquid, okay, and we, we want to move from this point to this point over here, okay. What is the change in pressure, or what is the pressure gradient moving from this point to this point over here? Now, if you study, like I said, high school physics, you probably already know that there's something to do with the height and something to do with the density, but that's not wrong. But here at Gaussian Math, we really want to show, you know, a conclusive mathematical method or approach to, to analyze the problem like so, and that's what we're going to do now, okay. Oh, sorry, assuming no shearing stress, okay, which makes sense because the two particles are moving in the fluid together, so they do not create a shearing stress or a force that, that, that interacts or force that appears when they interact with each other because they're moving in the fluid as a rigid body. Okay, so how are we gonna do about doing that? Finding the basic equation of the pressure field. Well, we know that pressure has something to do with direction, so we're gonna have to analyze the forces adding on a single water particle, okay? Try to generalize it and hopefully get a vector equation, okay? And then out of that vector equation, hopefully the pressure comes out. I may be talking a lot, but that is the approach, okay? And I'll show, we shall show it now, okay? For certain water, water particle in, in the fluid, okay, there are two types of forces, forces that are acting on it, okay. One of them is the surface force, okay, and another one is the force due to the weight, now you may know. So we're going to analyze those two forces. Let's start with the surface force, okay. The particles over here, okay, there's a force acting like so, force acting like so, a force acting like so, and a force acting like so over here in this, in the x-axis and in the z-axis. I've neglected the x-axis, but to simplify the analysis, but if you were to just turn it around, it'd be the same, okay? So, and obviously we know the force due to weight, like so, like that. Now, the objective, or our first objective, is to really find the force that is acting on the, the, the surface of the one particle, okay? Now, we know that the center pressure is P, correct? Okay? However, the, this one particle has a certain shape, you know, it's, it's a cube like that. So, really we need to find the pressure that is acting in that direction. Okay, I'm gonna write it out first. Now, we start with the center, the, the pressure at the center, P, multiplied by the surface area as you would know, okay? Which in this case is, sorry, we are, we are finding in the direction of the x, uh, y axis. So in this case, it would be delta x, delta z. Okay, not a problem like so. However, this quantity gives us the, the force acting at that point over there. Now, as you can see, we, we want the force acting at this point over here, which is a bit different from the, from the center. Okay, I'm gonna write it down first. Okay, you might be shocked, but I'll explain it. We're gonna take, okay, partial P, partial Y, okay, multiplied by delta Y del uh, divided by two. Okay, wow, why is that so? Well, if you will notice that there's a small change in the pressure moving from this point to this point over here, okay? That small change, okay, if you think about it, wouldn't that be the change in pressure in the y direction, right? Because we are moving in the y direction, we're moving backwards as attributed to the minus sign, okay? And we are partially differentiating the pressure in the y direction. So this will give us the change in the pressure in the y direction. However, we need to multiply by the length, right? To really get the pressure. So that's what we're gonna do. What's the length? The length is delta y divided by two, see? Delta y is over here. Um, delta y divided by 2. So, we partial differentiate with respect to y to get the change in pressure in the y direction, multiply by the length to get the pressure, and then multiply by the surface area, which is again delta x delta z. Okay. Now, the proper term for it is we're using Taylor series expansion of the pressure in the center to approximate the pressure a small distance away neglecting higher order terms as delta x, delta y, delta z change towards zero, okay, tends towards zero. However, uh, we, this is sufficient enough if we write it like so. Now we can um, simplify it and write p, take away partial p, partial y, uh, delta y divided by two, uh, bracket and delta x, delta z. Okay, now that's the pressure, finally, the pressure equation of the pressure acting in this direction over here. However, what is the pressure acting in this direction over here? Well, it's in the same axis, but basically it's just simply this, but it's a plus, okay? I hope you can see that because now we are increasing 
the distance or in the y direction, which in this case is by increasing by delta y delta r divided by 2. The principle is still the same. Okay, so now writing, knowing all this, we can write down the pressures in our diagram or the forces due to the pressures at the, at the, at the surface, okay, as p plus partial p uh, partial y, okay, delta y divided by 2, and then the, the, the area is delta x delta z, okay, sorry, this one is minus, my apologies, minus, okay, now here would be p plus partial p partial y delta y divided by 2, okay, multiply delta x delta z, okay, now what about the top and the bottom, well, this one would be pressure plus, okay, because like I said, we're moving up in the x direction, in the z direction, my apologies, but this time we are plus partial p partial z, okay, change the pressure in the z direction, multiply it by delta z divided by 2, okay, because that's the change in the distance and delta x delta, sorry, delta x delta y, and for here it would be p, take away partial p partial z, delta z divided by 2, okay, multiply by delta x delta y. Okay, that is a long one, but that's good, we're making progress. So what is the progress? Well, basically, we have found out the forces that are acting on the surface of that water particle, given like so.